so that kind of sparked something in me I just I never saw a female look like that before and I didn't really realize it was possible today we're going to speak to bodybuilder Hannah Hussein Hannah is a former ACC student and will be a guest speaker during the library speaker series starting in the fall Tell me kind of what your time was like here at ACC when you were a student. I enjoyed most of it. Some of it I did not enjoy. I didn't really have a major picked out. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of dabbled in like psychology and business, things like that. And then I eventually switched to kinesiology. I actually didn't finish here, mm-hmm. but I did go here for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. So and kind of what was your educational journey after that? Like when you were able to move on, where did you go from there? Um, I did a couple online courses. I actually just ended up getting certified through the, through the uh, NFPT for personal training. And what's the NFPT? It's the National Physique uh, D- D- Trainers Academy. So how did you get into bodybuilding? Like kind of what was your journey to get to that? So I start. I was always athletic growing up. I was, uh, I did horseback riding, I did gymnastics. Um, I started doing triathlons with my stepdad really young, like 12 to 14 age. And so athletics always really interests me. I used to (laughs) love running and jogging and things, but I wasn't very good at it. Like I wasn't built for it. And I remember my dad saying, or my stepdad saying like, he can appreciate the work I was putting in, but it wasn't really, I wasn't really meant for this, right? And there was, one day i was about 15 16 years old we had started going to a 24-hour fitness to train for our triathlon so i would be on the treadmill the elliptical use the the pool things like that and i met a trainer there and he kind of introduced himself and was like hey if you ever want to you know want a session or want to learn how to use weights what he, what actually happened was i was trying to use like an ab machine or something oh. and i was doing it really wrong Hmm. um and so he came up to me to try to help me and uh, i was like okay thanks and then it was probably like six months to a year down the road and i was working at an (laughs) heb a Hmm. grocery store and i saw this muscle fitness magazine with a female bodybuilder on it and i saw that and immediately like i fell in love i bought the magazine i actually (laughs) brought it home and my mom saw it and um questioned me about it and she was like she wasn't super nice about it like was like don't tell me you want to look like that and I was like oh, of course not and secretly I did <laughs> <laughs> so, so that kind of sparked something in me I just I had never saw a female look like that before mm-hmm. and I didn't really realize it was possible and so then I think it was like a week or so later I approached the trainer that had approached me and I was like can you teach me some stuff? And he was like, of course. And so that kind of started it. Um, and he took me through like a couple sessions and I just fell in love with it. Like the weight training was easy to me. Running was always super hard. Like, uh, uh endurance things were always pretty hard for me. Mm-hmm. I was better at like gymnastics. And then when I got to weight training, it was like breathing. Mm-hmm. Like, of course it was hard, but it was like hard in a different way. If that makes sense. No, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, in other words, it seemed to fit your body type and yeah. your body style and your tone, I guess, maybe. Yeah, and it was just, it was more enjoyable, I would say, because there was a lot of things about running and things I, I didn't really enjoy. Mm-hmm. How, so how many years have you been doing this now? I've been, do, so I've been competing since uh, 2013. Okay. So have you, like, won any titles since then? I have. I actually, I got my pro card last year. <laughs> okay. So that's kind of what, when you get into this, like, so you start out in the NPC. Well, there's a bunch of organizations but the NPC is kind of the most uh, recognized one Mm -hmm. Um, so you start out there you get qualified for nationals then you go to nationals then you have to win your division to get your pro card and that's kind of what everyone's after so I just recently got that last year so a lot of work though yeah (laughs) Yeah. well how do you kind of feel being at that point now like I mean because you've been doing it for quite a while now and you put in a lot of effort in this, so mm. kind of how do you feel about being at that point? I'm very happy about it. Um, I feel like I feel like I belong, uh, whereas, you know, before I kind of was like, it's the nature of this sport where we always kind of doubt ourselves, we always kind of question, like, there's a, there's a bit of body dysmorphia mm-hmm. in this. <laughs> so, but I do feel like I belong in the 
the pro ranks. I have not done a pro show yet. That's on the agenda for next year. Totally. So tell me what it is about this that drew you to it. Like, what do you enjoy about the process of going through this? Because, I mean, I know it, a lot of people, they I think they interpret it as just lifting weights, but yeah. there's a lot more to it. So kind of what was it about the process that you just enjoyed? Everything. <laughs> Everything, really. Like, when I got into it, I didn't have a lot of support other than that one trainer that, you know, was helping me. I There was not a lot of support with my friends or family, really, because they didn't really understand it. I, I think just finding a community that, like, it was like once I found the competitive community, because when I first started weight training, I didn't know it existed. I didn't know organizations like the IFBB, like the NPC. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that existed. You're going to give a talk here coming up in the semester. We have that the library speaker series, and we <laughs> usually bring a lot of guests on to campus. And how comfortable are you kind of sharing this? Because, you know, you were saying earlier you don't see a lot of women who look like this. You yeah. felt like this was something that, that you saw that was inspiring to you. So kind of what do you hope to get across to people when you're talking about what you're saying? So um, what we're going to be speaking about, and it's, it's going to be in November, I believe. We're kind of we're gonna kind of go over the history of like when bodybuilding started, the draw to it as far as like the aesthetics and the, you know, what it looks like, and then we're gonna get into the like where the sport has gone today and where it's gone for women specifically, mm -hmm. um, and like kind of the struggles that because it for for women it's a little more unknown and there's a little more risk with us, you know. So we're going to kind of get into the struggles and like, cause you know, I have firsthand experience on this, mm -hmm. um, kind of like the unknowns, what goes on behind the scenes and, um, just where the, the sport is kind of headed or like where I think it is, mm -hmm. you know, you never know, but, um, because it's, you know, the men's side is so much more mainstream now in the industry, you know, the, the women's bodybuilding category was actually taken out of the Olympia. And the Olympia is like the Super Bowl for bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. And they took it out, you know, a couple of years. It's back now. But, I mean, even from the industry, it's there's been pushback. And so kind of that kind of stuff because it's not – there's not a lot of coverage when it comes to women's bodybuilding. There's not a lot of big channels. There's not a lot – just not a lot of information. I think I have some good experience with, you know, the whole thing because I've been in it for so long and I've, you know – done all the things <laughs> made all the mistakes and so you know and when you think of women's bodybuilding you don't really have you don't think of somebody you know mm, right. i mean if you really know it maybe you know sort like of no Irish. identifiable icons exactly with men's you think of arnold schwarzenegger's you know there's a couple guys that are pretty mainstream that at least people know about mm -hmm. you know with the women there's not so much <laughs> So it just, it doesn't get a lot of love, you know. You kind of want to change that. I do. I do want to change that. <laughs> to read about these stories and more, visit allencollege.edu slash news. <laughs>